Hello everyone, this is Nighthawk here, and welcome back to another Marvel Timeline episode. Uh, today we are going to be continuing where we left off at. Uh, I remember I said I would be trying to record these videos on Saturdays, and the first one I did came out on Sunday. Um, so, besides that, we are just going to dive right into our second part of our timeline. Um, I got done making the second half of this this morning. Um, I'm, what I can tell from my script, it's still a little wonky. <clears throat> so, uh, the last thing that we left off was on Ant-Man. Um, and we were in the 1980s. So now what we're going to do is we're going to jump forward eight years later into 1988. Uh, this is where a young Peter Quill watches his mother die, and he gets abducted by a spaceship uh, moments later. Um, so that's what happened to Peter Quill. So he basically just got abducted, and we, no one heard from him for a while. Fast forward a year later into 1989. Uh, in 1989, Hank Pym quits working for S.H.I.E.L.D. after Howard Stark pressures him to share... No. Yeah, pressures him to share the secrets behind his his uh, shrimp deck. So Howard Stark wanted to turn uh, Hank Pym's idea of the Ant-Man project into a thing for the military, but he closed down uh, his whole project and decided to quit working for S.H.I.E.L.D. to make it easier on him. Um, later in that same year, uh, a powerless Carl Danvers crashes a ship with a lightspeed engine in it. Carol, Carl, however you want to say it, Carol then blows up the ship so the people that shot her down could... Wait, I'm still trying to figure out how this looks on my script. She then blows up the ship so the people that shot her down can't have the plans for the engine. Okay, this, um, the script's a little still wonky, like I said. Uh, the lightspeed engine's energy gets blasted into Carla Danvers, making her lose her memory and is taken to another planet where she... Or no, planet where the Kree are from. Uh, fast forward about three years later, I think? No. Two years later? I'm not sure. I think it's... Uh, it might be two years later. Uh, so basically now in 1991, the Winter Soldier assassinates Howard and Maria Stark. It turns out that the Winter Soldier is a brainwashed version of Bucky Barnes that was recovered from the fall of 1945. Um, so yeah, basically Bucky was sent to go on a mission and, you know, he, just, he killed uh, Tony Stark's parents. Uh, now, fast forward four years later into 1995, uh, Carl Danvers is fighting against the Skrulls when she is sent to Earth and meets up with the young Nick Fury. Carl start, er, uh, Carol, however you want to say, Carol starts to remember her life on Earth and finds out that she is fighting on the wrong side of an alien war. Carol agrees to help Talos and his people find a pl uh, place to live. So, they go up into a ship... Well, anyway, they go up into a ship that's in space that was made by the same person who made the lightspeed engine. The power source of the ship was the Tesseract. Now, here's the weird thing about this. No one really knows properly how the Tesseract got up to there. Um, this is my theory. Now, I'm not sure if this is actually correct, but... we Yeah, so... We don't really know how the Tesseract came into Marvel's hands, so my theory is that she was working on the Lightspeed engine with Howard Stark before he was assassinated, and she found a way to take the Tesseract without being caught, so... Because apparently Marvel was a Kree, and the whole timeline doesn't add up from where the Tesseract was last found. Because they said they found it at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, of, like miles before they found Captain America, but if they found it and it was in Shield or with Shield at the time, how did Marvel get her hands on it? That I don't know. That's my theory. Before Howard Stark was killed, Marvel and 
Howard Stark were working on the Lightspeed engine together, and that's how she was able to get the test rack without being caught. Okay, so Carol takes the test rack back to Earth and tells Fury to keep it hidden so no one can find it. Um, so that's what happens. Uh, I think about four years later, 1999, Tony Stark meets a scientist named Aldrich Killian on New Year's Eve, blowing him off by promising him to meet him on the roof. Also that night, he met a man named Ho Yinsen, which he doesn't remember because, you know, he's Howard Stark's son, he doesn't remember anything. Uh, a couple years later, somewhere around maybe 2007-2008, uh, a man named Bruce Banner blasts himself with gamma radiation while working on a new version of the Super Soldier Super Serum, transforming him into the Incredible Hulk. Now, yes, I know this is the Edward Norton version of the Hulk. Personally, I honestly I don't like the person they got to play Hulk in the Incre in the 2008 Incredible Hulk, but I like the way they made Hulk look. If that makes sense. Okay, now, this is where some of like the main events start to kick, kick into place. So in 2008, Tony Stark is kidnapped, af kidnapped after being, um, oh wait, no, hang on, I'm reading this wrong. Let me just start that over. In 2008, Tony Stark is kidnapped. After spending months held in captivity with Ho Yinsen, he escapes and starts his journey as Iron Man. Tony then finds out that his mentor, Obadiah Stain, was the man behind Tony's kidnapping. Uh, and apparently when Tony was trying to escape, uh, his original first suit that he made was kind of destroyed in the desert. And when they found him, Obadiah Stain went down to the desert and gathered up all his uh, the materials to make the suit. And he became the Iron Monger. Tony then defeats Obadiah Stane and reveals himself to the world that he is Iron Man. Uh, and right after Tony revealed to the world that he was Iron Man, Nick Fury, director of S.H.I.E.L.D., approaches Star uh, Tony Stark about the program, The Avengers Initiative. A year later, in 2009, a man named Ivan Vonko watches the news conference where Tony reveals himself as Iron Man and decides to start working on his own arc reactor. Now people are saying, well, if in Iron Man 2, Tony was having like some kind of um, problems with the arc reactor in his chest, and everyone's like, well, if, I, if Ivan Vonko is having that, why doesn't he have any problems with that? Again... Even though he made an arc reactor, the arc reactor is not attached to him. It's not embedded in his body. It's on a machine. On, it's, you know, you can see from the picture. Um, six months later, after Ivan Von Ko is work, gets done with his arc reactor, he tests it out by attacking Tony uh, in Monaco when he was doing like a race car driving event or something like that. This is the start of what is known as Nick Fury's Big Week, since S.H.I.E.L.D. is so busy recruiting for the Avengers Initiative. Now, I always thought that this was interesting because they never, they, they didn't have anything, they don't have any movies Mar or Marvel movies that came out in 2009. But apparently in the cinematic universe, this is what was actually happening in 2009. So... In this week of 2009, the Hulk fights the Abomination in Harlem, New York. Rhodey and Tony fight Ivan Vonko. And most of you guys already know this. I'm not sure if you do. Um, during that battle, Tony saves a kid with a toy Iron Man, Iron Man helmet on him. And that is actually young Peter Parker. Um, if you guys don't remember that scene, you might have to go back into uh, Iron Man 2 and watch it again. But that's just a whole other conversation that I could be having with someone else. Uh, during this time, Thor is also banished from Asgard and is sent to Earth, where his hammer is discovered by Phil Coulson, or however you want to say it, and Captain America wakes up in a fake hospital room after being found in the Arctic Ocean. So that right here is known as uh, Nick Fury's Big Week. That's what, ha that's what happened, and apparently everyone said that the Abomination and Hulk fight was on Monday, um, the Iron Man and, uh, 
versus uh, Ivan Vanko happened on Tuesday. The whole event of Thor happened on Thursday and Friday. And Captain America awaked on Friday. That's what they say. I don't know if that's true. Uh, fast forward about three years into 2012, and Loki arrives on Earth and takes the Tesseract on the orders of the Mad Titan Thanos. Hang on, I gotta flip the page. He decides to give Loki the, uh, the Chitauri army to take over the Earth. But thanks to the Avengers' first time assembling, uh, his plans were failed and Loki and Thor were sent back to Asgard. So, the Avengers disbanded, and they don't see each other again for another, I'd say, three years. So, we're going to have a lot of stuff to go over in the next episode, because I'm pretty sure we're going to get to uh, Captain America Civil War. So that one's going to be a pretty big one, and even though this one was still pretty big, there was a lot of stuff to keep up, keep up with, but... That is going to be it for right now for today's episode of the Marvel, or the entire MCU timeline. Honestly, these are kind of fun making because I get to show you guys cool pictures of what the characters look like and what event happened where. And right now, it seems to be that the Tesseract is the most, um, or the only Infinity Stone that seems to pop up the most. It popped up in Captain Marvel, Captain America, the first Avenger. Uh, it came up in the first Avenger. Um, the first Avengers movie. So, and technically after Avengers Age of Ultron, you don't see any... They don't really start talking about the Infinity Stones more until after 2015. So for right now, we are just going to end the episode off until next Saturday's episode. So... If you guys like this video, leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know if you guys thought that I messed something up or forgot to put something in there that was really important. Um, let me know if, if everything I'm saying is right so far. Personally, this is what I have found of what actually happened in the timeline. So that is what has been happening since the beginning of the, since the, beginning of the universe to 2012 in the MCU timeline. And we got like another, I'd say, another 10, 12 years to go through of this in the MCU. So, leave a like and subscribe. This is Nighthawk, and I will see you guys in the next video.